here we are once again. It's 9-11, well 9-12 now. I just made it or maybe I just missed it right in that minute moment. But we are coming live with our 911 anointing call. We are declaring Psalms 91 over serious situations that we are facing. Today I'm excited to bring another word, another revelation that the Lord has brought to me with Psalms 91. And um, to just go over the anointing that we've been given in this chapter, the authority that we've been given in this chapter, we are actually going to go out today and cancel the curse. That is what I felt like we were supposed to do. And then yesterday, there's my buddy Gwen. Gwen, you are a person that we were, I was just speaking with yesterday about canceling the curse and taking our authority over these pestilence, these plagues that stalk us at night, the things that the enemy is using to harass our health and our mental well-being. You see, when people struggle with physical health, it also goes after their mental health. Good morning. Can you say good morning to everybody? Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Abby. And she is a beautiful testimony of what it looks like to live well um, with loss and when it looks like you've lost because we did not lose when we lost her mama, heaven gained. And we have to, we have to believe that, that, that even death on this side is just pain on our side, but it is not a loss when that person is in paradise. And so, but we are going to discuss the authority we have over canceling the curses in our lives of disease and pestilence. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't get enough of her, even though she's the cutest thing ever, huh? Hi. Oh, thank you for those kisses. So, ladies, let's just pray. Pray for me. Pray for Evie that, that um, she's not too adorable so we can focus on what the Lord wants us to do today. Because, I mean, seriously, she's pretty adorable. So, Ebby, let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we just come to you today and we thank you. We thank you that once again we have the freedom to gather as women of God to come in as a sisterhood. Lift up your voice. Lift up your word. Lord God, we are taking you at your word that you've given us this psalm to declare for the next 30 days, Father, till... Till September 11th, Lord, we will pray, declare, believe, proclaim, decree Psalms 91 over every incident, over circumstances, over our fear, over our health, over our loved ones. Lord God, we believe your word that he who promised is faithful. We believe, Father God, that your word says that, that you watch over your word faithful to perform it. Lord, that it says that when we throw this word out there in faith, it will not return void. God, that we can cast our bread upon the water. Lord, I thank you for your promises in your word that we can cling to in times of fear, anxiousness, unsettledness, Lord. When the enemy is stalking, when he is tormenting, when we feel like, when we feel like his lunch. God, I ask right now that each woman that is under the sound of my voice, they begin to feel a courage, an authority, Father, a righteous indignation towards the enemy who has been tormenting, harassing, bullying, and inflicting fear and pain. And instead today, God, we sturdy our legs. Lord, we link our arms together and we speak your will be done and only your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So here's what the Lord has been giving me as I've just been jotting down um, just thoughts on this chapter uh, on canceling the curse because there's some promises about pestilence and plagues and diseases that stalk in the night. Now, if you've noticed in the last oh, 18, 19 months or so, we've been living in a place and a state of feeling stalked by a virus. Am I right? But I want you to know that before this, there have been other things that people have felt stalked by. If there is cancer in the family, you feel stalked by it in your, in your life. If there's diabetes, heart disease, that is something that lurks around the corner. If it's a generational um, disease, you can feel it peeking around the corner threatening you. 
Am I right or am I wrong here? Before there was these this situation that we are dealing with today, there was another, there was other situations. There were other things that we lived with in fear. So here's what I want. I'm just gonna read to you what the Holy Spirit just put in me today. We can't fear the 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 plagues and the diseases that stalk us. We must take a different approach. Being aware and on the offense is a positional key. Taking on these tormentors with authority, wisdom, discipline, and prayer is living out a combative strike against the curse. What is it that you feel fear and you feel that it comes with a curse towards your family? It could be COVID right now. There are people who are losing loved ones from COVID. I've lost loved ones from diabetes and heart disease. I've had loved ones that have fought cancer. We have friends that have overcome cancer and we have precious ones that have lost the battle with it. And so what is it that stalks, stalks us like prey in the night that causes us to feel anxious for our children or causes us to pray a different way because of what somebody else or you are fighting? See, we have to take on these tormentors with authority, wisdom, discipline, and prayer. It's living a combative strike against the cursed. Knowing what the enemy meant for evil, God will use for good, is a great approach in a situation if we're facing something about our health. Knowing that he works all things together for our good will help us confront a disease we never thought we would face. Can I get an amen? Show me your amens in that one. I do not believe that diseases and pestilence and plagues are part of God's plan in our life. I don't believe in being thankful for them either. I believe in being thankful in them. Thessalonians 5.18 tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. I like that before and it says be joyful always. All right, am I back, ladies? Am I back? Oh, the enemy's such a jerk trying to steal our, our, um, our moment of declaration. I just hope that I didn't freeze at a horrible, weird face right now. So I'm going to go back and read what I just read a minute ago. I do not believe in being thankful for these diseases, these pestilence, or these um, curses in our life. I believe in being thankful in them. Come here. Isn't she adorable? Come here. Oh, come here. Let's get your blanket. See, we know that God works all things together for our good. And we need to take on Paul's approach when he bore a thorn in his side and he asked the Lord to relieve him of this, of this irritant, this pestilence. We don't know what it was. I apologize, girls. Here, baby. Here, baby. She's on her. She's on a mission. He asked the Lord to relieve him of the irritant. And so here's what I know, that when God doesn't relieve us of something, what do we do? What do we do when we know that we might have to live with something that we never thought we'd face? Is it cancer? Is it diabetes? Is it heart disease? Are you living with a, with a mental um, health issue or somebody else with a mental health issue? One of the things we never thought we would have to confront in our life was a son who came back injured from war with a head trauma. I never imagined, and I decreed, I declared, and I stood upon the faith of God that he could heal him. But as time went by, and I still decree, and I still declare it, but I also live in the even if, even if. And there's been times in my own life where I've had to face diseases that I've asked the Lord to heal me from. But even if, even if he doesn't, what, what is my part to play in these moments? Okay, when a toddler's quiet, it's dangerous. Okay, she's fine. Okay, look at Jesus. And here's what the Lord told me to do. That, and he also gave me hope in it. 
You see, I have had family that have died of the very same diseases that I have, but I refuse to live in fear of it lurching around the corner to steal my days. Instead, the Lord has given me instructions to live a life of discipline, that even though I haven't been healed from something, I can live a long life with it because God's plan and purpose is on my life. And I will live according to that. No matter what it is my physical body has to carry around, I'll do my best to partner with my health to, to, to combat a disease but I also will not live in fear over it and, and live in fear of it coming after my kids. Instead, I will begin to combat the curse, canceling the curse upon my life. I still decree and declare healing upon my children's life. I, I decree a prevention of it. I ask God to put a guard on them that they don't have to fight, even though, even though, even though we're not delivered of certain situations, circumstances, plagues, pestilence, or diseases, does not mean we can't live a successful, godly life declaring the goodness of God in the land of the living. You see, when my dad had diseases that should have stole his life, instead, the Lord gave me a revelation in that. He said to me, what is the bigger miracle? Being healed of a disease or living with a disease that should have killed you, living a long life, living a life to the end of your days with a disease that should have killed you, but it didn't. Because this is being thankful in circumstances, is the Lord can teach us things in these moments, the same way he, sh he taught Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they had to face a fire. They weren't delivered from it. But instead, God said, but I'm sorry, the boy said, even if, even if you don't, even if God doesn't deliver us, we won't bow. You see, we're not always brought a rescue, but we're brought a remedy. Sometimes we're, we're fortified in our strength, in our courage, and in our faith. And so today we are going to take Psalms 91 and we're going to begin to declare it over the diseases that stalk us at night. I want us to take the authority in us and the indignation that we have that the enemy has even attempted to harass us. Am I still frozen? How am I doing girls? I can't tell if I'm frozen or if I'm, I'm, I'm on alive again. The enemy is really going after our internet because this is an important, important message for us to bring because he wants to keep us in a state of frozen fear. And so just pray over my internet right now because I have not had as much problems with it as I've had lately. So it just keeps going off. Ah, yay. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Kareen. Okay, I'm going to keep preaching up my storm. So here's what, I, here's what I want us to do. I want us to look at this scripture, Psalms 91. And I want us to start looking at, I posted promises today. I want us to take the promises in the word of God that, that tell us our authority when, when pestilence strikes us and also what happens when God sees the apple of his eye going under attack by the enemy. But I want us to remove all fear. I know that there are people afraid of the C-19. I know that there are those that are, are looking over their shoulder waiting for it to touch their household. And they're waiting for it. They're waiting for it to touch their It's not. A, in fact, I've heard the, the saying, it's not about if you get it. It's about when you get it. I don't want to live in that type of anticipation of disease. I want us to live in an expectation of hope. When we start anticipating something coming and we gird up for it, I can understand that if we hear a tsunami coming and we hear an earthquake is, is going to hit, or if we hear things that we can remedy. One minute. Oh, God bless America. Hey, hey. Ladies, I am just trying to impart some. 
It is a fun day here at the Rodock Barn. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, we'll bounce. Okay, so we're going to take the joy of the Lord, the faith of a child, the <laughs> impartation of her strength and her energy, and we're going to decree and declare Psalms 91 over our families, over their lives, over our lives. We are going to reverse the curse. We're going to cancel the curse. We're going to rebuke every disease that's come after us, after our children, and we've seen it still those that we've loved. We are taking Psalms 91 right now as a weapon, and we're wielding it against the plague, the disease, the pestilence that is stalking us. So I, I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation today. And I hope that you hear what I hear in it. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I will trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of night nor the arrows that fly in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's really not funny. Hey. <laughs> come here, cute. Drink. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will, be, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. So I just want to pause um, here. And I, I appreciate your guys' patience with me, with little, with little Ebby here. But I just want to talk about a couple of things, and then we will wrap this up in prayer. In Job, the book of Job, there's this part where he, Job would go before the Lord every day after his children had like had a, uh, an all-nighter with partying and celebrations. And he would go and offer up a, a sacrifice before the Lord just in case just in case his children had sinned against God. But there's this quote when he loses his children that says, what I have feared has come upon me. Now, I know that we all have fears like that. And some of us are walking in those moments of what we have feared. But I want to give you some comfort in these moments of what we are fearing sometimes that are coming upon us. One, we have to remove the authority the torment of what the enemy is doing. What I have feared causes us to live in a place of um, crippling immobilization. If we get afraid of something, sometimes it will prevent us from being active in our faith. If we get afraid of, let's just look at modern days, we get afraid of, of living, living life fully. We shrink back because we're afraid we'll get sick. We're afraid our children will be snatched. We, we live in fear rather than wisdom. And we can't give the enemy that, that leverage of us shrinking back in times where giants are raising their head again. 
We are raising giant slayers. We are a giant slayer ourselves and we can't shrink back when things are hard or when things are threatening us. We can't withdraw from the fight. We have to be in forward motion in times like today. So this, this message here today is to equip you, empower you, encourage you. Do not fear the pestilence that stalks. Don't say what I fear will come upon me. Don't say, well, my dad had cancer, my grandpa had cancer, so I'm just waiting for myself to get cancer. If you've said those words, you, re you repent of them now and refuse to come in agreement with them. If you've said, well, the COVID is, has hit my household, I'm just waiting for it to hit my household. I rebuke that now. Instead, I say that the Lord has raised up a standard that he will be your rest you. It doesn't mean you won't face it. It means that it brings God Almighty to the moment. So you can't live in a place of waiting for catastrophe, waiting for it. Live a combative life and go on the offense with it that says, if the enemy dares, if the enemy dares come against my family, one, I'm going to equip my family with health. I'm going to equip them with the right things that they need to do with nutrition, with health, with, with the prayers of covering a combative approach. And if it does, even if it does, you stay the course with your declarations. You stay the course with the word because we are thankful in all things. We are praying in all things. We are joyful in all things. And when these things or if these things face us, it's not a, ma a matter of us just waiting for it to happen. It's a matter of being ready if it does. It's the person who who pays attention like like the, um, sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but when we are told to prepare for something, the, the, there it is, the, the, the 10 virgins, five were ready, five were not. Now, the chances are, People thinking that that this was it and this was it and that was that and this is when God's coming back. Well, now we're living in the last days. We've been doing that for hundreds of years now. The thing is, is that we have to be ready at all times, no matter when our day is. Uh, we have to be ready when our time comes. Okay, Gwen says, shield and buckler is his truth. The meaning is that this, let me, let me see more. Let me see what you got here, Gwen. I gotta see it. The meaning is that this pledge or promise would be unto them as the shield of the soldier is to him in battle. Amen. I love that. Our shield and our buckler. Hallelujah. We are saying that we will not live in a state of fear today. We will not fear the pestilence, the plagues, or the diseases that stalk us. Instead, we will prepare. We will be preventative. We will be offensive towards it. We will raise up a standard, a shield, a buckler, and we refuse to let it infiltrate our courage. Do not come in alignment with the enemy's torment. The same way that Paul said that this thorn in my flesh won't leave. He never aligned himself with it. He never aligned himself with what was troubling him. Instead, he aligned himself with the truth that in my weakness, he is strong. When I was, and this is my last point, when I was bleeding a few months ago, we were, it just felt like one hellish day after another. And I was bleeding um, internally. Yes, preach it, girl. Um, and I was laying on the bathroom floor, and my husband came, and I just couldn't even lift my head. And I could hear his fear. I could hear his fear in his voice as he's calling 911. And all I could say was, oh, first I was telling him, I'm fine, I'm fine, just help me get to bed, I'm fine. I wasn't. But then I knew, this in inside of me, I knew. I said, Joe, I'm not going to die. I have things to do. I knew I wasn't done. I knew I wasn't done. That I knew the enemy was not going to win that day. There's going to be a day. It's appointed once for a man to die. When that day comes, it doesn't matter what it looks like when we go to heaven and what, what the exit form is. What it, what it means is that... There are no losses when you serve God. The enemy doesn't win. Our bag of bones might fade and die, but our spirit man is going up and we will fight another day at the last battle. We're not done when we're done here. And so I say this for us to live courageously and not in fear, to live in an attitude of, of wisdom 
and and we can be cautious without being crippled in anxiousness amen all right let's close in prayer ladies and thank you again for your patience with evie um normally she's pretty chill if you've noticed that but today she decided to be a little squirrel so let's just pray ebs can we pray i'm going to close in prayer i'm going to impart to you um just a passion to stand and if you have somebody or you yourself are fighting a disease you're contending some kind of of disease pestilence or plague that is stalking you put it in the chat we want to pray with you we want to encourage you in your health we want to encourage you in your faith to stand if you're praying for somebody for healing let's just draw a bloodline right now and cancel the curse that the enemy has come against you or your loved one with we refuse we refuse to allow the enemy to steal our courage our faith and our peace keep standing keep walking jesus we give you today lord i i pray for each woman that is listening now and will listen in the future lord if they're fighting issues health issues if they are contending against any form of um generational health curses or generational um inheritance of diseases lord i rebuke i cancel the assignment lord we come in agreement right now and we ask father god that you put a wall lord it stops with me lord let them say it stops with me i will be the one that stands stands at the gate i will be the one that resists this disease i will be the one that begins to change the dna of my family i refuse to live in fear i refuse to live in an anxious thought of waiting for trouble to touch me instead lord god i will stand as with my weapon in one hand and a tool in the other lord i will stand vigilant over my health over my children's health over, over my grandchildren's health i will speak over them i will reverse every curse that has tried to come against our generations that has stolen lives at a young age today we raise up the standard we draw a bloodline and we say no more it stops with me in jesus name i refuse to allow any more of the enemy's combative ways to infiltrate my lineage my bloodline today it stops with me lord you are our rescuer our rampart our shield our hiding place our strong tower you are the rock that we take we take a, our hiding place in and today we tuck ourselves in as we stand strong in you in Jesus mighty mighty name amen 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 all right ladies I will catch up on these chats I'm gonna go put a little peanut to bed um, tomorrow once again set your timer 911 in the mornings we are gathering together and we are decreeing his word tag a friend share this i will try to post the youtube link we are rallying the troops to start we are we are declaring war on the enemy who has been taunting us like a goliath we are grabbing our sling and our stone and we are going to throw the cornerstone right between the eyes of the enemy amen i love you Bye.